Welcome everyone to our regular planning meeting of council. Thank you for joining us. We have all council members in attendance this evening. Councillor Link from Ward 1, Councillor Buschetti from Ward 2, Councillor Kleiber from Ward 3, Councillor Prague from Ward 4. We have our CAO, Mr. Olnick, online as well, and our planner, David Payton. Thanks for joining us and helping us. And RM of West St. Paul on the screen is our Municipal Legislative Officer, Ms. Shaw. I will read the resolution to open up our meeting and get us started. Be it resolved that the meeting be called to order and that the agenda for the meeting be adopted as circulated. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded. Councillor Prague, any discussion, hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried, thank you. We have our opening remarks, um, replacing our invocation, so I'll read our opening remarks. The Arm of West St. Paul strives to be a safe and inclusive community that residents are proud to call home. Where diversity is embraced, the environment is cared for and leadership is valued and trusted. The West St. Paul Council is committed to working as a team to provide good governance, safe and reliable infrastructure, recreational facilities, and outdoor spaces the community can enjoy in a sustainable way that values the environment and is financially prudent. Thank you. We have three planning items on our agenda for this evening. And uh, the first one is uh, subdivision. And I will turn that over to you, Mr. Payton, to guide us through that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So the first application before you tonight is subdivision application file number S21-2875. Now there is no public hearing associated with this application. That's because no new roads are being created. So uh, just as a reminder, the RM does follow the provincial legislation, which is the Planning Act. Uh, the Planning Act states that, uh, that for subdivisions, um, the only time that hearings are required are for when um, new roads are being created. So again, uh, no public hearing associated with this application because there are no roads uh, that are being proposed. This is to create two lots, uh, 0.49 and 0.53 acres in area uh, at 48 Kennebec Street. Uh, this is zoned RG Residential General, and it's actually a reduction in the number of lots. So currently there are three lots. Um, this would re uh, reduce the number of lots uh, down to two. Uh, as you can see in the context map, uh, the property is located on the Red River uh, to the east of Kennedy Street. And the, uh, the neighborhood is zoned, as I mentioned, RG Residential General. Now, if we look at the, uh, uh, the location map, which is a closer view of the subject property, um, you'll see that our mapping shows this as one lot and calls it 48 Kennedy Street. That's because uh, up until last year, um, this was one lot, uh, there, or rather, there were three lots, but it was one title. Um, so this is uh, sometimes referred to as lots of record. So they are pre-existing lots, but because they were uh, they formed one title, uh, it was one lot. Uh, now, last year, um, the uh, property owner was issued separate titles for each of the lot. So that's the trigger for um, for new lots to be uh, created. So it went from three lots under one title to three lots uh, each on their own title. So currently there are three uh, different lots. Now, uh, because these lots do not meet zoning requirements for area and width, our office cannot issue building permits uh, on them unless and until variances were obtained uh, to allow for the lots to be um, less than, um, uh, less than the, the minimum requirements for area and width. So the applicant, um, in order to develop the property, had two options. One was to uh, apply for and obtain variances, as I mentioned, for each of the three lots, or um, apply for a subdivision, which they have done, which is the application for you tonight, uh, to uh, reduce the number of lots to two. And both of these lots that are being proposed uh, comply with zoning requirements for area and width. So there's a minimum site uh, width required in the RG zone of 75 feet. Um, that is the width of the two proposed lots. There's a minimum site area of 15,000 square feet, and the uh, lots that are being proposed are just over 21,000 square feet in area and just over 23,000 square feet in area. So uh, once again, the two lots that are being proposed um, comply with or exceed 
the zoning requirements for area and width. And uh, I've just marked up on this map, generally the location of, of, the, of the two proposed lots. So uh, as you can see, it's essentially splitting the, um, the property down the middle. If we take a look at the application, uh, the subdivision application map, you can actually see uh, the three existing lots. So they're identified as lots four, five, and six. So once again, this is a consolidation of those lots uh, and a resubdivision into two. Uh, and again, those two lots do meet to the minimum requirements for site area and width. In terms of servicing, the applicant's proposing wells and uh, holding tanks. So the Middle Church Secondary Plan does encourage infill as a means of facilitating a transition to sewer service. Uh, our RM administration has indicated that sewer may be available uh, in the future, subject to grant availability and community support. So council will have to determine if they are comfortable uh, approving the subdivision, which, uh, just a reminder, is a reduction in the number of lots uh, in advance of sewer availability. Um, so future connection to sewer service when and if available would be required through the proposed uh, uh, development agreement. Now, as I mentioned, the lands are located adjacent to the Red River uh, and they are located in a designated flood area. So at the building permit stage, there are a number of, uh, uh, of things that are required to happen uh, in order to mitigate flood risk for any future development. Uh, so for example, the, the land would have to be raised to the flood protection level our office would require a geotechnical engineering report to ensure that, uh, that the proposed development is not going to affect uh, bank st stability, for example. Uh, and the, uh, the proponents of the development would also require a designated flood area permit uh, from the province through Manitoba infrastructure. So there's a number of, of things that would have to happen at the building permit stage uh, that are intended to mitigate flood risk. Now these aren't, uh, wouldn't be requirements of the subdivision approval. Once again, this would be at the building permit stage. However, there are a couple of conditions that, uh, that are being recommended that are related um, to the flood risk uh, and the location of the property adjacent to the river. So uh, one approval condition is being recommended to establish via an easement, a 30 meter wide or 100 feet wide uh, buffer adjacent to the river. This would be in order to restrict development, stabilize banks, and protect or reestablish riparian areas and habitat, uh, as is required by the development plan. Uh, also recommending uh, in the development agreement um, that, uh, that the agreement outlines requirements for tree retention uh, and include the statement regarding flood risk uh, to ensure that any future owners of the property are aware that this property is located in a designated flood area. Now the Middle uh, Church Secondary Plan does um, indicate that uh, new lots created should respect the general physical patterns and character of the established neighborhood. So I wanted to bring up this map showing site widths in the, uh, the neighborhood. Um, as you can see, there are a number of lots that are, excuse me, uh, that are 75 feet in width or less. They're also uh, zoned RG. So the, all those lots that are identified in the orange color on the map before you, uh, those are existing lots in the neighborhood that are less than, uh, that are 75 feet in width or less. And once again, the two proposed lots uh, that would be created as part of the subdivision are 75 feet wide, um, which is the minimum required in the RG residential zone. So there is a, a precedent for um, uh, for lots of this width in the uh, in the adjacent neighborhood. Uh, in terms of lot area, as I mentioned previously, the, the proposed lots do exceed it by quite a bit. So there's a minimum requirement of 15,000 square feet. The proposed lots are, are 21,344 and change and 23,087 um, approximately square feet in, the, in area. So they do exceed those uh, minimum requirements. And once again, in the general area, there are lots that are of uh, similar size. Certainly. So should council wish to approve the application, our office recommends the following conditions be placed. First, that the applicant slash owner submits confirmation in writing from the CAO that taxes have been paid, that applicable development levies have been paid, that a drainage slash lot grading plan uh, to be prepared by a qualified engineer to the satisfaction of the municipality, and to ensure that the proposed properties do not drain into or impede drainage from neighboring properties. Um, D, that a development agreement has been entered into to address the following, but not limited to development fees, servicing, access, drainage, tree and vegetation cover preservation, and a statement regarding flood risk. 
the second recommended uh, condition of approval would be that the applicant submit written confirmation from Manitoba Hydro that an easement agreement has been entered into as requested by Manitoba Hydro. And the third and final uh, recommended condition is that the applicant slash owner provides a 30 meter or 100 foot uh, wide easement along the Red River um, to protect riparian areas, help stabilize banks, provide aquatic and wildlife habitat, and protect water quality. That's all I have for this application, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Planner. I'm going to go around the virtual council table here and see if there are any questions for you. And I'll start with the area councillor, Councillor Bichetti. Any questions for uh, Mr. Payton? Uh, yeah, first I'm gonna, it, it's to do with this application. It also has to do with the last one. You were saying that the province does not make us do a public hearing because there's no roads being developed, but do they say that we have, that we cannot advertise with more clarity to the residents to show what is actually happening on this property? Do they state that we can't put more information? I'm not aware of any restrictions uh, on notification, for example. Uh, no. Okay. The, the reason, one of the reasons I'm asking this is well, all of council and I, I received a lot of emails today um, with a lot of concerns. Some of it turned into, you know, is it single family? Is it multifamily? Because that's what people have been hearing. A lot of concerns on what's happening with the riverbank, that kind of stuff. So this council's, I think, been pretty adamant that we want to be open and transparent with the residents and to bring a lot of over and above the minimum standard to the to the residents so that it doesn't turn into a, you know, a conversation throughout the community and it's changing over and over again. Because some people feel like they were left in the dark but at the same time we get this information at the same time the public uh agendas would have gone out well i'm not going on personally i'm not going on the public agenda to see what's there but i'm going on to my council agenda so i don't see what's there so this was brought up to me by a a, res a few residents and they weren't very happy about that and it, it's making us look like we're trying to hide something so to alleviate any of that, you know, in the future, I think for myself, I can't speak for the rest of council. I'd like to see more information being put out, at least part of the report, you know, the basics of what's going on there. It doesn't have to get into detail like, like our multi-page one, because a lot of that isn't going to mean very much, but just to open it up so that people are aware of what's going on, it just to, to, to have, you know, numbers on there, well, I have to look back to see what that is, and I have access to it. So, uh, an everyday resident isn't gonna gonna understand what that is. So, okay, but I'll get off of that now. Um, the geotechnical now does that? I understand we have to put that in as a condition if approved, if we want a full geotechnical. But does that involve? I, I, sorry, I just don't know what it involves. Does that involve checking the soil beneath what is there right now? Like we've all received the pictures today of what's been ha what has happened in the past on that property. So you know, loading up that bank with two homes is that going to be sufficient enough to to take care of this? It, just to, for clarification on what the geotechnical would improve or would include. Well, I guess Sorry, the first uh, clarification I want to make is that uh, council doesn't need to add any conditions uh, that a geotechnical report is required um, at the building permit stage. That's an automatic requirement for any development that's happening uh, in a certain distance of the Red River. Certainly for development on these lots, geotechnical reports would be required specific um, to, to a building that's, that's being proposed. Um, Council could require, if there are concerns at the subdivision stage, um, council could require a geotechnical report as a condition of subdivision approval. Um, if they have concerns that, uh, you know, the, if you don't want to create these new lots without knowing with absolute certainty that, uh, um, that the geotechnical report is not going to come back and say these lots can't be developed, um, then you could require it at, uh, at the uh, subdivision stage. But I'll note that the, uh, the relevant provincial agency did not request that as a condition of subdivision approval. Um, they have requested that in the past where they've had, uh, 
people who have specific concerns. So I just want to clarify that first, um, that a geotechnical report will be required regardless um, uh, in order for the, these lots to be developed. Uh, in terms of what the geotechnical report actually contains, um, that's, uh, that's uh, outlined in, in, in uh, the bylaws and, and reviewed by our, um, by our building and services staff. So uh, I, I don't know exactly what the, uh, what the requirements are, uh, aside from that it's to ensure that, the, uh, that the, the proposed development doesn't have any negative effects in terms of bank stability, for example. Kind of answers it, but okay. So you were saying that there's three, there is the deeds for three lots there, but they would be non in compliance for for the sizes. So right. it's not like the the person could come into the RPD and get building permits on all those three lots if he doesn't come in for this subdivision approval with the two lots. Right. They would need to either get variances or or the subdivision. Now, another thing on the report, it says that the property has to be raised up 5.1 feet. And, and the reason I'm getting this is I was, I was around in 2011 when the tiger tubes were put down there. And this property was probably one of the lowest on the street. And it was probably one of the most difficult on the street to get, you know, swerving in and out of getting the tiger tubes in there. So would that not affect the neighboring properties saying we can't you know distribute water onto the neighboring properties going up five feet that's a significant amount of you know runoff that would be going to the side yards so yeah and so there are conditions that are being recommended that would address those those types of concerns for example um, the arms requested a drainage plan um, that uh, and a lot grading plan to ensure that uh, um, that the the proposed lots don't negatively affect uh, the adjacent properties in terms of drainage. So um, there's a condition in the development agreement. And as I mentioned, at the building permit stage, um, they would require uh, permits from the province. They would require the geotechnical report. There's other uh, requirements. So um, so I, I understand your concern for the neighboring properties, but um, with the existing conditions that are being recommended, uh, those concerns should be addressed. Any other questions, Councillor Bruschetti? No, sorry, I was still on me. I, I got most of it answered. Thank you. Some of it, not quite, but good enough for me. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Preg, any questions for Mr. Payton? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> just like when Mr. Bussetti, Councillor Bussetti opened up there about more information to the public, like the people were unaware, they didn't have much information to go on. And when we have these kind of things going on, the public loses confidence in, in the council, no, although it's not our fault. So all I'm requesting from the RRPD is to give as much information as possible so the people can make an educated, educate, be educated what's happening, not relying on hearsay because it makes council looks terrible, although it's not our fault. That's all I'm requesting. And for any development agreement, anything, as much as possible should be given to the public. Number two, I have very grave concerns about the riverbank stabilization there. I received pictures of it with rocks, everything on the riverbank there. And that doesn't sit well with me because of the last flooding we had and the, the depth of the land. It have to go up over five feet. And that doesn't sit too well with the water going to the side of the neighbors and so. And I don't want the municipality with the riverbank to be holding the bag to be paying for these things. Thank you. So uh, 
Um, in terms of the uh, the notifications, um, that's certainly uh, something that I can bring up to management and, and uh, your administration and uh, the Red River Planning District management can certainly have that discussion moving forward uh, if there are different uh, notification or uh, engagement um, requirements that council wants to see. So that's definitely something that I can bring up. Uh, in terms of geotechnical reports, I just... Uh, Perhaps uh, just to clarify for the councillors, I can I can read out the specific section of the zoning bylaw that talks about geotechnical reports and what they uh, what they contain. So, um, geotechnical reports shall be prepared by a certified professional geotechnical engineer and may contain evidence of the following: test borings, groundwater piezometer tests, slope indicators where necessary, identification of any subsurface mining operations, river erosion analysis, and surface erosion analysis. The conclusions provided within the above engineering study shall approve the proposed foundation designs and fully acknowledge soil conditions and proposed siting of the development. So I just wanted to, uh, to read that out for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Payton. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for our planner? Yes, I had trouble unmuting there for a minute. Uh, first of all, have I been saying your name wrong? Is it Mr. Patton or Mr. Payton? Uh, it's pronounced Payton. Okay. Sorry about that. Not a problem. Um, what, I, what I wanted to know is, first of all, you mentioned that there's one title, but there's three lots. Now, how did that happen? So right now, just to clarify, there are three titles, um, one lot on each title. But as of uh, last year, um, those three lots were on one title. I don't know how exactly that, that happens. Um, we refer to them as lots of record. Um, they aren't created anymore, but um, where in the past where there were multiple um, lots uh, created and, and perhaps that was a way of consolidating them without actually um, without actually separating them on, on different titles. Uh, I can't speak to how, exactly how they were created, only okay. that, um, that they don't require, the, the province allows them to be um, separated out on their own titles uh, without going through our office or, or the RM. Yeah, that, it seems very odd to me. I, I would like to know how suddenly last year, one title becomes three titles. If we have a loss of record, as you, as you indicated, uh, that means that the original records that would have subdivided this land have been lost. Is that, is that what you're telling me? No, so sorry, that was lots of record that we call. Oh, lots of record. Okay. So that's, a, that's a scenario um, where we often see in older uh, established neighborhoods where there are multiple lots on one title. Um, again, I can't speak to how they were. It's an anomaly, basically. It's an anomaly. Uh, it does come up. Uh, we see it often in the city of Selkirk, for example. Uh, but there are uh, occasions such as this in, in the Arm of West St. Paul as well, where, where the situation. Okay, could you bring up the map for me, Mr. Payton, with where you showed the lots that are smaller and those lots that are bigger? You had, yes, there we go. Um, now, when I look at Kenebec and I look across the street and I look on that street, there's only one tiny lot at the end that doesn't meet the requirements, right? Lots of 75 feet in width or less. But generally speaking, on Kenebec, those are, are uh, fairly large lots. Would you agree with me? Yeah, as you can see in the map, there aren't any that are uh, 75 feet or, or less, except for that one that you mentioned. Uh, to the right. Point. So those three lots are really, they're not in keeping with the surrounding area. Neither is the one that's being proposed because that would really cut back and uh, make it quite small uh, compared to some of the other lots. The neighboring, you have one on the other side on, the, if I, on my picture on the left hand side, how big would that lot be? Any ideas? No? You're um, guessing. So which, which lot are you referring to? The, the one on the left, uh, uh, the left of the diagram. Adjacent to that, uh, that property? Yeah, yeah. Um, just give me a moment. I'm going to uh, unshare my screen here and take a measurement of that. Uh, 
Councillor Kleiber on the north side. Proper, am I correct? Just depends which one you're looking, which way you're looking at it. I'm looking on the. Well, I guess it depends on. Yeah, we, no, on the south side. So there's a smaller one on the north, and then there's a larger one on the south. So I just want to know what that south one is. So directly to the south, uh, there is a lot that is 150 feet in width. Um, directly to the north, there is a lot that is like 100 feet. It, I'm sorry, it is what? 100 feet in width. Okay. So this would be smaller than, than both of them. Okay. Um, so is this lot currently on a septic field? I'm not aware of the current servicing. Um, the uh, our office did issue a de demolition permit for the existing uh, dwelling there. So uh, as far as I'm okay. aware, the well, maybe the maybe our CAO can answer that question whether or not these are on holding tanks or if they're they're not service lots, obviously, right? I don't believe so. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then, sorry, I'm just going to clarify. The the I have. Sorry. I'm just going to clarify, they're in an area where the province does not allow for new septic fields. So if there was right. a septic field, it would have predated that. So if, if, if you're going to subdivide or do any kind of building at this point, it has to be holding tank or connected to sewer water, right? Because right. it's part of that corridor. Now, Mr. Payton, have you seen the, um, I think council got some pictures of the concrete that's on the riverbank. There's quite a dumping of concrete on the riverbank that has eroded the riverbank and has caused issues as far as stability is concerned. Have you seen those pictures? I'm not. Did you investigate that at all or inspect that property for that? Or are you allowed to? I don't know whether uh, I could say I'm allowed to or not. Um, yeah. It wouldn't be our typical... Um, if some, if an issue with the property, for example, if there's concerns with how the riverbank's being treated, if there's work ongoing that hasn't received a permit, for example, um, that would come to our office through a, through a complaint uh, and our office would, would deal with it through the violation process. So um, nothing came up. Uh, we do refer these applications to uh, provincial bodies and provincial agencies. Nothing came up uh, in terms of concerns about the existing uh, yeah, we were we were sent. I think that all of council was sent some pictures about the riverbank. It seems to be uh, have been suspect uh, sub a, a substantial dumping of concrete, um, which is destabilized. It looks like it's destabilized the riverbank, which is a concern to me. If anybody were to build on that property at this point, it's something I think that has to be mitigated before we can allow anything to even go forward. As as far as any building permit, whether it be three lots or two lots. Um, I don't know if that's something that we have to handle or not, but um, it's very concerning. The other thing I was going to mention about the um, subdivision not being uh, available to our um, residents, I think we are, uh, as a council, are in control of that. Certainly the municipal access, we don't have to, but I believe if we had a council policy, then um, we could provide more information if that was our choice. Is that correct? Certainly, uh, as I mentioned, there's nothing restricting um, information being shared that I'm aware of, so it would come down to direction from, from council. Right. We, we'll just do better. <laughs> okay. Uh, those, are our, those are my questions for now. I think this, uh, my opinion, th this property is a little bit problematic for a number of different reasons, but um, I'll let some of the, another councillor, uh, councillor Link, comment on that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Payton? I do, uh, but first I'll just comment that I agree uh, about uh, the public information. It's always been my impression that council can have a public hearing if they choose to. They can go above and beyond the regulations, and I think that's what Mr. Payton has been telling us. Um, um, and we, I think we need to look at um, getting some kind of policy or something in place for that. Um, now, uh, this afternoon, um, I looked at what impervious fill was. I kind of thought I knew what it was. And yeah, it's clay, very heavy clay soil. And it's mixed with gravel and sand. 
and it's capable of being compacted to a dense state. Now for flood proofing, I'm reading that's exactly what is needed. So there's going to be more than five feet of fill brought in and it's going to be compacted down to five feet so that the place is flood proofed. That's my impression. Now, Mr. Payton, I think the um, applicant has said that they're going to preserve the trees and all the vegetation on the property. Is that correct? I don't know that they've said they're going to preserve all the, uh, the okay. trees. They have stated that their intent is to uh, to retain, I believe, most of them. I'm just going to check their application form to see exactly what wording they uh, they use. Uh, they stayed in their application comments that they're going to keep most of the existing trees. Okay, well, they can keep them, and it's, uh, uh, and if they get the front, uh, flood proofing and bring in that five feet of compacted soil, every tree on that lot is not going to, it's going to be killed because the root zone is shallow. And the root zone will be covered up by five feet of clay. You can't flood proof and preserve those trees. The two just won't do. You might if you're not working with five feet of, of impervious fill, which will cut off the uh, air and the water from getting down to those roots. So. That's a big concern of mine. I don't think they can do it and, and preserve what is there as well. That's all uh, that I have to say about this. Thank you, Councillor Link. Uh, I just had a follow up on a couple of things on the um, provincial changes. Um, do you know when those came into effect at all, Mr. Payton, on um, no longer uh, under the planning act that we follow, that you follow, um, that we are no longer to have public hearings for uh, subdivisions on existing roads. So that uh, I don't know when the when the legislation came into effect, the provincial legislation, uh, but I do know that the RM zoning bylaw was amended in 2016 to align um, those notifications uh, or public hearing requirements with the planning act. So if we, and, and I know I'm not sure if all councils, councillors remember, but we, when that happened, it is disturbing to council. We like to be open and transparent. We like to hear from residents. It's very challenging to make decisions when we don't get them to um, have representation from area residents in front of us. So I echo the concerns of my fellow councillors, but we did bring in legal to talk about this immediately after um, our, our municipal lawyer um, in an attempt of what it would look like to step outside and above the Manitoba Planning Act and start holding uh, public hearings for this. So it is something that we've looked into, but um, concerns were raised by our, our legal. So. I know that there are residents um, watching, that residents are concerned. I share those concerns, but it's very challenging when the province changes legislation. So um, I did also want to ask, and, and I had looked on your site, um, that you don't post uh, at Red River Planning um, any of the background information on your Red River Planning site as well. Um, it's just the um, just when it's public hearings. So that might be something to consider and maybe uh, our planner and administration can have a discussion that maybe that information is still posted um, just so that it is visible. So we, we wanna comply with legislation. We wanna, we wanna work with what we have here and make sure that, that we're following proper process, but how do we make this more accessible? So that would be maybe one thing that I would mention that um, you know, residents clicking on Red River Planning to look for your report, even if there's not a public hearing, um, I think that that would be a good thing and we can help at this end with our staff as well. Um, the rest on, in terms of geotechnical, I, I mean, I share the concerns of, of my fellow council members, but I, I do understand that there would be standards to meet. So um, on the one hand, this is an opportunity to address a failing bank um, that would not otherwise be addressed. So I, I see both sides of it there. Um, and, and those are all my comments. Questions have been answered from council members. Thank you very much for your presentation. 
I will read the resolution and then council can discuss and vote on this issue. Get a recorded vote, please. Request for a recorded vote. Thank you, Councillor Bichetti. Be it resolved that Council of the Real Municipality of West St. Paul under subsection 125.1 of the Planning Act approve subdivision S21-2875 for the property located at 48 Kennebec Street to subdivide the three current lots into two new lots, approximately 0.49.53 acres in size subject to the following conditions. One applicant owner submits confirmation in writing from the Chief Administrative Officer of the municipality that A, taxes on the land be subdivided for the current year, plus any arrears have been paid or arrangements satisfactory to council have been made, B, payment of any applicable development levies have been paid, C, a drainage lot grading plan to be prepared by a qualified engineer to the satisfaction of the municipality and to ensure that the proposed properties do not drain into or impede drainage from neighboring properties, D, a development agreement has been entered into to address the following, but not limited to development fees, servicing, access, drainage, tree and vegetation cover preservation, statement regarding flood risk. Two, applicant owner submits written confirmation from Manitoba Hydro that an easement agreement has been entered into with Manitoba Hydro with respect to existing and or future facilities associated with the subdivision and a plan of easement as required by the Real Property Act has been provided. Registration of this agreement will be included as a condition of the final certificate approval. Contact Manitoba Hydro at the following. Three, applicant owner to provide 30 meter, 100 foot wide easement or restrictive covenant along the Red River measured from the ordinary high water mark without compensation to protect riparian areas, help stabilize banks, provide aquatic and wildlife habitat and protect water quality. Can I have a mover please? Councillor Buschetti, can I have a seconder? Councillor Prague, and I will just go around the table uh, for discussion. I'll go back to Councillor Buschetti, any comments for discussion? No more comments. Okay, thank you. Councillor Prague, any comments for discussion? No more comments for discussion. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any additional comments for discussion? Um, I, I would just say that I'm really concerned about this property, especially with the Riverbank situation and the concrete. I, I certainly don't want to approve something that has stability issues. And if it's then sold to a new owner, then we've got a whole another host of problems. So. Uh, I think that if this owner wants a subdivision, they need to clean it up first. That's just my thought. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Councillor Link, any comments for discussion? No, no more comments. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I, my comments would be, um, I share the concerns of residents in the area. Uh, I think that there are a lot more lots that are 75 feet or over than under. And uh, I think the residents would like to be seeing the, the property stay consistent with what's going on there. We have uh, grants coming up for wastewater connection uh, in the near future, hopefully. Uh, we've applied for those grants and are waiting on them. So to see two separate lots with uh, hookup to holding tanks when we're on the verge of having wastewater connection, I'm not sure about that either. So those are, those are my comments. All right, read the resolution and we've had council discussion. We've had a request for a recorded vote from Councillor Buschetti. I will now call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is defeated. All right, Mr. Planner, I will turn it back over to you for our second subdivision uh, application for the evening. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So the next uh, subdivision application is S21-2881. Again, same situation. There's no public hearing uh, for this application as there are no uh, roads uh, being required. And that's, um, again, uh, as a result of uh, provincial uh, legislation in the Planning Act. What is being proposed in this application is to create five lots for residential use. The lots range in site area from 1.51 acres to 4.73. Um, the zoning is RR Rural Residential and the property is located at 76 uh, Wheatland Road. 
Um, council may recognize this property as they recently approved a rezoning um, in August 2020 was given third reading to rezone the property to a rural residential zone. Uh, as you can see, the uh, and as I mentioned, uh, the current zoning is RR rural residential, uh, which is consistent with some of the, uh, the the properties in the surrounding area. There are a couple of properties that uh, remain zoned agricultural, such as the one directly to the uh, to the south. So the proposed subdivision does conform to the development plan, which allows for establishment of rural non-farm residences on small acreage lots, um, which is what's being proposed here. So I have. Uh, just generally outline the location of the proposed lot boundaries on the location map for council now. So as you can see, the five lots are being proposed. Two of them have access off of Wheatland Road. Uh, the remaining three are accessed off of uh, Billingham Road. Uh, the lot sizes, as I mentioned, um, the smallest lots being created are 1.51 acres in size. Um, the sizes are generally consistent with the existing rural residential lots in the surrounding area. For example, the lots directly to the uh, to the east on Billingham Row are approximately 1.6 acres in size. Uh, lots across Billingham Row are approximately 1.4 acres in size. So once again, the smallest uh, lots that are being proposed here are 1.51 uh, acres in site area. Uh, the applicant subdivision application map um, can uh, be seen here. As you can see, the proposed lot two does encompass uh, an existing dwelling. Uh, there is a shed uh, existing that straddles the boundary between proposed lot two and proposed lot three. Uh, a condition of subdivision approval is being recommended that uh, that shed be, uh, be demolished or removed from that location. So the applicant is proposing to um, service the subdivision by holding tanks. And this is consistent with the development plan policy, which states that on-site wastewater treatment uh, will be developed in accordance with provincial regulations. Now, this application was referred to Manitoba Conservation, who is the provincial authority for on-site services. Um, they advised um, that they did not object to the proposed use of holding tanks. Uh, so just to reiterate, there are no concerns with the use of holding tanks from a policy uh, policy perspective, and there are no concerns from the relevant uh, provincial authority who regulates uh, on-site uh, services. Um, now, if you take a look at the subdivision application map, you'll see uh, directly to the north, there is a public reserve uh, with a footpath that connects Wheatland Road to Billingham Road. So just uh, to make it clear, this uh, subdivision would not impact that public reserve. I know that was a concern raised at the rezoning stage. Um, however, since the report, RM administration has requested uh, an additional item to be addressed in the recommended development agreement. Um, that is for additional lighting on the adjacent public reserve, as well as a street light on Wheatland Road to be installed at the applicant slash owner's expense. Um, should council wish to approve the application, our office recommends the following conditions. First, that the applicant submits confirmation in writing from the CAO that taxes have been paid, uh, any applicable development levies have been paid. A development agreement has been entered into to address the following, but not limited to access, design standards, servicing, a drainage slash lot grading plan. Yeah, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, an added condition that's been added since the report was written uh, to be addressed in that development agreement is additional lighting on the adjacent public reserve, as well as a street light on Wheatland Road to be installed at the applicant slash owner's expense. Uh, recommended condition number two is that the applicant submit written confirmation for Manitoba Hydro and Central Gas uh, that an easement agreement has been uh, entered into as is being um, requested by those uh, utilities. Condition number three is that the applicant provide written confirmation for Manitoba Conservation uh, that the existing septic field has been decommissioned. Uh, and four, uh, that the existing shed straddling the boundary between proposed lots two and three is removed um, note that a demolition permit may be required prior to removal uh, or demolition. That's all I have for this application, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Planner. I will go around the virtual council table again, and I'm going to start with Councillor Buschetti again because it is his ward. Councillor Buschetti, any questions for the planner? Uh, no. Well, yes. Okay. The, you said it wasn't going to impact. There's only one more driveway being added to Wheatland, correct? Because the exist the original one was on onto Wheatland. That's correct. So there's an existing approach, as you can see on this uh, application map, to that uh, yeah. proposed lot two. So just one more uh, access would be required. So, to the one. 
just when I blow it up, it kind of gets blurry. So, and um, regarding, I'm, I'm glad the, the RM added that lighting issue. I'm just wondering if we can check also at the Billingham end, because there is going to be three more lots coming out. Um, you know, th there's been a lot of more people walking. It is a dark area at night. I would like to know that there's a light closer to the entrance of that um, public reserve walkway just for safety reasons, just to make sure there's lighting there. It's not, you know, two street, uh, two yards over, that kind of stuff, just to make it safe in that area. That's all I have to put right now. Thank you, Councillor Buschetti. Councillor Prague, any questions for the planner? Yeah. Um, the planner want to confirm all these lots here that's on the map here will be having holding tanks. Am I correct? That's correct. Because I know some lots are larger and they can have um, septics. So what you're telling me, all those lots will be serviced with septic tanks. Correct? The applicant is proposing holding tanks for each and every lot, yes. Okay. And a concern I have only is about the lighting because I know that area is pretty dark. And there were several complaints about the darkness in that area, a uh, lot of vandalism and things like that. And if with council, deciding with council to add some more lights to that area. That's all my questions. Thank you. So, Mr. Planner, to address those, it would be possibly just under development agreement has been entered into. We've got access, design standards, servicing, drainage, and, and two councillors have mentioned lighting. Yes, yeah, so that, um, that additional uh, fifth item to be addressed in the development agreement um, is written currently as additional lighting on the adjacent public reserve, as well as a street light on Wheatland Road to be installed at the applicant slash owner's expense. Okay, good. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for the planner? Um, I have a comment. When this was zoned, I very specifically asked the applicant to make sure his lots were two acres and that they would have septic fields, not septic tanks. And he agreed to that. And now I see a plan which is completely different. Um, the lot three looks like it's landlocked. Where is the approach on the driveway for the middle lot? That would be on Billingham Row. So it's uh, on the screen, it's to the right of that proposed lot three. Okay. Uh, I don't understand why suddenly this has changed and why he can't do two acre lots. Um, because there's constant problems on Tivoli Lane and in that area with dumping raw sewage into the ditch. And as a council, we have been very adamant that if we can um, have septic fields, that we have septic fields, not holding tanks. We, I think that we have realized that there, that people are doing this and that there isn't any, um, doesn't seem to be sustainability coming out. In fact, I recall on Grassmere Road, we allowed two properties to retain their septic field despite the recommendation that they should go to a holding tank. So I hope council remembers that because I, I think that this configuration shouldn't be. I think this configuration is is should be two acre lots. They should have a septic field in for them. And, um, you know, it just, it looks to me like, yes, you want to maximize profitability. I get that. But we have to deal with the outfall of that. And if people start dumping sewage again, we got a problem again. And we've got five lots here where that potential could happen, both on Wheatland Road and Billingham. Um, They've had a couple of other things I wanted to say here. The approach to, uh, I'm wondering if you could just blow up the approach to lot three because it, it isn't there. I see the, uh, I see the proposed approach to, yeah. Okay. So your approach in the driveway there, where uh, is that little, that little uh, thing there is the approach. How close is that to the walking path? And would that, that that actually cause issues if people were walking there and suddenly you have a driveway there? So I mean, no the other ones are far enough away. 
but this is this looks like it's very close to the walking path. I, I don't see a dimension uh, there for uh, proximity. Yeah, I don't either. Okay, well, I find a I find this subdivision very problematic and certainly not what the applicant had promised us that they would do when we did the zoning. Thank you for answering my questions. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Councillor Link, any questions for the planner? Yes, I'll just review. The frontage for lot four and five are each 198 feet and they front onto Billingham. Lot three frontage is 617, almost 18, and also fronts onto Billingham. Lot four, I see that it fronts onto Wheatland Road, and I see, I think, it's pretty small, but it looks like the frontage is 55.3. A frontage, yeah, 55.3. Now on page five of the report, it says that the site width for lot two is 243.39 feet, but it's not, is it? It's 53.3, that's the frontage, is it not? Or am I all messed up here? So um, zoning bylaw measures frontage differently than site width. So site okay. width is perpendicular to the side uh, lot lines um, 50 feet back from the frontage or halfway uh, the depth of the lot, whichever is lesser. So in this case, uh, the width would be 243.39, but you're correct in saying that it has 55.3 feet of frontage. Okay, okay. So... The lot width is at the measured at the back of this lot, two hundred and forty three thirty nine. Uh, effectively, it's it's it would be measured either fifty feet back from the frontage, uh, or halfway. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Get it now. All right. I was mixed up about site width and frontage. Um, I share concerns about uh, these lots not being sized at two acres minimum uh, for a septic field. Their, uh, their widths are all good for a septic field, but um, the acreages are not, and they could be. It, this property could be developed with lots that are minimum two acres. I know I hear I live near here. I know that people curse having to have a holding tank and having to get them emptied so often, and it's extremely expensive, more expensive than having a field installed. Yeah, there are problems with the field. They're not perfect. Um, but... Um, I do recall also discussion of lots being two acres being suggested. Um, south of this area, I think you've got maps of the area. Yes, the area on Billingham, they've got holding tanks. But I think, say, Maser Bay, I think Maser Bay has fields. So they would conform more to these lots to the south of them if they were two acres with septic fields. We're not going to get water here at any time. There's no plans. I, I shouldn't say that, but I can say safely that there is no plans to bring sewer uh, here in this area. We're concentrating on bringing sewer service and water service to the settlement area, the settlement center, Middle Church plan. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Um, one question from me, Mr. Planner. Um, in looking at the walking path that is um, being preserved there, 
would you have any information on how wide that path is? I mean, if it's noted on the uh, on the applicant subdivision application map, I don't see a width. Um, I can take a quick measurement, but just stop sharing my screen for a second here. Yes, please. I know that the area, um, and, and just off the top of my head from being in that area, that it is a very narrow path. Um, would this be an opportunity for us to take uh, an easement and widen that path up, knowing that it will be used by everybody in that area um, to get them to the place structure on more? Could this be an opportunity to uh, take easement and widen that path? So the, uh, the width is approximately 20 feet. Okay. Um, and yes, if council deems it necessary, uh, they could include a condition uh, that the applicant either provide an easement or that subdivision is adjusted to uh, to uh, give some of that uh, land to the public reserve. I wouldn't want to, um, and if that's something that could be noted as the condition and then up to staff in, in dealing with the development agreement to, um, to determine that, it's not something I, I have any expertise in or would want to do. Um, but for them to have access with their equipment and for keeping the, it clear of snow, uh, if the CEO is okay with that, that that just be determined later. Go ahead, Councillor Bichetti. I want to comment on what you said about taking an easement for that. Well, it's only on public reserve. What if instead of taking the easement, the developer would widen the path even onto our public reserve? The you know, bear the expense of widening that. I think that's a good idea. And that's something we could put in a development agreement and that'll come back to council then and, and CAO and our planner can look at that. I think that's a good idea. And that, Councillor Prague, did you have your hand up? No, 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 thank you. And then uh, Mr. Planner, sorry, one more question from me. The number five condition I don't have in my in my list of conditions here. Can I just have you read that again in terms of the lighting? Certainly, so it's uh, additional lighting on the adjacent public reserve, as well as a street light on Wheatland Road to be installed at the applicant slash owner's expense. Okay, that's good, thanks. I wasn't sure if it was at just the ends of the public reserve, or uh, it sounds like that that could also be a requirement uh, along the path um, to install some kind of solar lights or have something on the path. I want to make sure that people can walk uh, from from areas safely. It becomes dark now in the winter at like 435. So if people are walking with their kids from Moore Road Park and they're wanting to walk back into that neighborhood, then at least they can do so safely. Good. Thanks. Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. Just wondered if uh, if council could uh, tell if we could have a discussion about these holding tanks because uh, I know that Councillor Buschetti's had lots of problems in that area on Tivoli uh, of sewer dumping. Are we now okay putting in holding tanks because we weren't okay with it on Grasmere? Uh, are we now changing our policy or what are we doing? I haven't read the resolution yet. So if we don't have any more questions for the planner, I would read the resolution and then we could have council discussion. Okay, thank you. With no further questions for the planner then, I will read the resolution. And Mr. Planner, when I get to number four, I'll have to have you read number five. I don't know why that's not included in my package, but um, just if you can read that one for me. Be it resolved that the Council for the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul under section 125.1 of the Planning Act approve subdivision S21-2881 for the property located at 76 Wheatland Road to create five lots from an existing property ranging in size from 1.51 to 4.73 acres subject to the following conditions. One, applicant owner submits confirmation in writing from the chief administrative officer of the municipality that A, taxes on the land to be subdivided for the current year plus any arrears have been paid or arrangements satisfactory to council have been made. B, payment of any applicable development levies have been paid. And C, a development agreement has been entered into to address the following, but not limited to access, design standards, servicing, drainage, lot grading plan to be prepared by a qualified engineer and submitted prior to any development to the satisfaction of the municipality and to ensure that the proposed property does not drain into or impede drainage from neighboring properties 
Mr. Planner, were we going to add about easement for widening the path? Did you have a line for us there too? I did. Uh, that would be a separate condition outside of the development agreement. Um, but, okay. Uh, okay. Then I'll, I'll keep going then. Two, applicant owner submits written confirmation from Manitoba Hydro and Centra Gas Manitoba Inc. that an easement agreement has been entered into with Manitoba Hydro and Centra Gas Manitoba Inc. with respect to existing and or future facilities associated with the subdivision and plan of easement as required by the Real Planning Act has been prepared registration of the agreement and, in, and included as a condition of the final certificate of approval. Three, applicant owner to provide written confirmation from Manitoba Confirmation and Climate Environmental Compliance and Enforcement Branch that the existing septic field has been decommissioned in accordance with Schedule uh, 1 of the On-Site Wastewater Management Systems Regulation. Four, that the existing shed straddling the boundary between proposed Lot 2 and proposed Lot 3 is removed. Note that a demolition permit may be required to remove to removal or demolition. And Mr. Planner, I'll let you read the last two conditions. Certainly. So um, the fifth condition would be that the applicant slash owner adjust the proposed subdivision in order to dedicate land without compensation to increase the width of the public reserve to the satisfaction of the CAO. Uh, and that uh, um, condition we previously discussed that wouldn't be part of the development agreement. So it would be uh, condition 1C5. Uh, is additional lighting on the adjacent public reserve, as well as a street light on Wheatland Road to be installed at the applicant slash owner's expense. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Planner. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Buschetti, seconded. Need a seconder, Councillor Prague, and I will go around the table for discussion. Councillor Buschetti, any further comments for discussion on this? Um, okay, I guess this is where we're going to discuss the holding tanks. Um, just to clarify, C Councillor Kleiber, the, the one that we did on Grassmere was an existing lot, and it had about a 150-foot strip between the two pieces of property, which was for Grassmere Creek. So it actually divided the two, the two lots. The parcel to the south was completely separate, and that holding tank had no, or the, sorry, the septic field, was not even on that property. So that's that's the only reason that that was brought up as leaving that because it, it didn't change the scope of any of the property by us removing that piece of land to it. There was already a 150 foot strip or it could be even bigger that is all designated for the Grassmere drain. So that, that's all I wanna say on that part. And the rest of Billingham uh has holding tanks so for us to turn around and allow them to put fields i understand the lots came in smaller than than you know maybe what was through our discussion but we can't tell the developer how he's going to come like what he's putting in for a plan so and that's i guess what he proposed so i just wanted to clarify on that one it's it's come up a few times so that, that was how we clarified that. So thank you. Thank you. Councillor Prey, go ahead. I know, and I concur with some of the councillors here, that they said these lots were going to be two acres. And now this came forward here. You know, we were told it's two acres. And now this is coming forward. So what do I gather from that? That's my question here. You know, it's changed all of a sudden without us knowing anything. And now this is being brought forward to me. You know, that's, uh, I don't mind the holding tanks rather than the, the thing, but they were said before there were two acre lots. That's my question. When you come and tell me something, I want that to happen, not to be changing without us knowing. That's my problem with this. Oh, and understandable. Just to be clear though, the last time they came before us, they applied for zoning and they didn't submit anything on subdivision. So if a subdivision plan wasn't done, then that's the problem that we get into when residents say, we just want to see what they're going to do and we want to see the plan. The problem is people are entitled to change their plan. 
right? So that makes it hard on, on the zoning level of what we're approving and what the plan ends up when they actually subdivide. Thank you, Councillor Prague. Councillor Kleiber, any further comments? Well, on the last zoning application, I very specifically asked the applicant to make these two acre lots so we could keep the septic field. And he said, yes, I will. So to me, that's a promise. So whether he changed his mind or not, you know, you gave, as far as I'm concerned, he gave his word. As regards to Grasmere, those, those are still not in compliance with sustainability, but we made an exception or an exception was made for them. So that's, that's what that is. These are now not in, these are in, not in, um, these could be two, two acre lots. If, if it's not possible for a lot to be two acres and we make an exception because we grandfather the septic, that's one thing. But this property has the ability to be two acre lots and they're just not doing it. And that's what I have issue with. So we can say, oh yes, well, Billingham Road, they got, they got holding tanks. Yeah, that's great. Not working out very well over there. And it's not working out on Tivoli Lane either, which is directly across from it, because they're dumping all the sewage into the into the uh, into the ditch, Grassmere Ditch. So while it has been done, it doesn't make it good. And I can see holding tanks in the Red River corridor where there is no other option except connecting to a sewer or putting in a holding tank. But here we have the option. Here we have the option to say we want to see septic field instead of a septic tank. And um, we, you know, when you know better, you do better. And I think that we can do better on this application and that the individual needs to go back and reconfigure and do proper two, two acre lots so that we can put septic fields in. That's my opinion. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Councillor Link, any final comments for discussion? Yes, I do. Uh, yes, the, the lots on Billingham Row have holding tanks and people find them expensive. And to the south, as I said, on Mazer Bay, they have fields. This area, as long as you meet the provincial regulations, will allow for fields. Lost my train of thought here. Um, I do recall a definite, as Councillor Parag and Councillor uh, Kleiber have said, a definite uh, promise, I would say, and uh, for two acre lots. It's, they've got, they 198 feet, another additional two is 200 feet of frontage. That would do it for those two lots, lot four and lot five. Lot three qualifies. It's got the width. But just a minute here. Does it have uh, Mr. Patton? I think I'm going to have to call Peyton. I'm going to have to call on you for the septic fields. Is it frontage? Or is it width? Um, it's like it's 100, 198 frontage. feet and two acres. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think it's 200. OK, 198. But it, doesn't that have to be frontage? Sure. Work. Sorry, I'm just uh, site width is what what they require. 198 feet of site width. Okay, so width. then lot two has got enough, and so is lot three. Um, if these could be bumped up to two acres, half an acre each on the on the north side and. Or the northeast side, it could be made to work. There might be a problem with getting access. Lot three might end up being um, having no front, no no access. But I'm 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 really if if septic fields are allowed here and there's no 
promise and no plans for service out here. And this fellow is going to sell those lots. He's going to take away the choice of putting in a field for those that can have. And I don't think that's right. I don't think it's right to put in and develop an agreement that people who buy these lots and if they meet the requirements for a field, how can we force them to go to tanks? If they meet the provincial reg regulations, I wonder about that. OK, I guess I've said enough. Thank you. Um, we've read the resolution, correct, Mayor Christian? Yes. Yep. Can I have a recorded vote on this, please? Yes. Uh, I guess just points um, for me for follow up. It sounds like that if two properties uh, from what the planner had said that even for the property that is compliant with four acres where they have the ability to do a field, they're choosing to put in a holding tank. So e even though the size is, is, you know, would allow that, um, that the applicant is choosing to put in holding tanks. Um, for me, uh, in terms of lot size, I'm not concerned it's consistent or exceeds the surrounding area. Uh, in looking at the map and the information, these are 1.5 uh, acre lots with a four acre lot. And it looked like area uh, lots were 1.3 or less. So in terms of the lot size being consistent with the neighborhood, I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I do wanna caution us and, and I'm very careful to talk about um, issues that we have of dumping in ditches. I don't want people to watch this and assume that everybody in the Billingham neighborhood and Rosemary Path area that's on holding tanks are not compliant with uh, provincial legislation. Um, there are a few issues that we have shared with the province uh, of non-compliance. Overwhelming majority of people in this neighborhood are very compliant and, and people do not pump raw sewage into the ditch just because they have a holding tank. I do not want people in these neighborhoods to think that we assume that um, or, or that they're complaining about it and running private lines off into the ditch. Um, those are one offs that are unacceptable and we've shared with the province and are working on that. But by no means do I want anyone watching this to think that if you move on Billingham Road, you're just full of raw sewage everywhere. And I, you know, holding tanks are there for a reason to protect our aquifer. Um, and, and part of why holding tanks have been brought in, um, even though this is, you know, outside the corridor in terms of size of yard and having to have those holding tanks is to protect the aquifer and not have failing, hold, failing uh, septic fields. So I understand the concerns that are raised, but we've also really been talking about the aquifer in that area. And we talked about the heavy industrial uh, development that we defeated and we had real concerns about water and the impact to water. And we had Dash Mesh School that we allowed to, um, to proceed and they wanted to do a septic field. And we said, no, we want to protect our aquifer and our water for that area. So, um, you know, I, I understand the concern that we have, but a holding tank is the sewage is held and it is pumped away and it is not seeping out or having issues. So um, it was a real concern in that area and we've made some real significant decisions to force holding tanks uh, in that area to defeat an industrial development and then and then force Dashmish School to have holding tank um, when the province was going to consider allowing a field in that area. So. We want to make sure that everybody in that area has has protected water uh, and that there's not any kind of issues. So I, I understand what other council members have said and everybody will vote the way that they want. And I, those are my concerns. We've got an area that's consistent. Um, we're not creating a new neighborhood. We're extending what's already there. And in, in my opinion, so to be consistent with uh, Billingham and Rosemary Path when that was the requirements for all of them and we're extending it by uh, for houses. I don't personally have a concern with that. I know concerns were raised and I respect that. Are we wanting to go all the way around the table again? Councillor Kleiber, you have more comments. I'll go around the table again. Go ahead, Councillor Kleiber. Um, yeah, well, when you have a septic field, you don't pump your sludge into the field, you pump it into the tank. So no sludge goes into the field, gray water goes into the field. 
Uh, having said that, Wheatland Road doesn't have septic tank, uh, septic holding tanks, it has fields. So if you wanna be consistent with what is in the area, then you have to look at Wheatland as well, not just Billingham Row. So uh, there's a number of issues here still. Um, I didn't say that uh, the entire Billingham Row is pumping raw sewage. I said that there's concerns on Tivoli Lane. There have been concerns, been brought to my attention, been brought to Councillor Buschetti's attention. And not only that, we have uh, issues on Magalis. We have issues everywhere where we have holding tanks. We seem to have one or two that don't necessarily follow the rules per se. So it's not that we have a whole bunch of people not complying, but we do have uh, the odd people on, on the odd streets not complying. But it is a problem. And we know that it is a problem. And as a council, we have said that we are committed to uh, septic fields where we can and where we can't holding tanks. And that was always, always in the Red River Corridor. This is not in the Red River Corridor. This person has the ability to, to uh, have two acre lots and is just refusing to do it. That's the difference for me. And uh, I just want to make that clear. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Link, any additional comments? The only thing I'm going to say is provincial regulations allow fields. This is still a rural area. That's the only thing I'm going to say. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Prag, any additional comments? Mine have to do with credibility. You know, and um, if you were to tell me something and it's going to be this way, then let it be this way. Don't change your mind midstream and the people don't know what's happening. That's my concern with this thing here, credibility. Holding tanks, sewage, I don't, you know. I know sewage comments people from the holding tanks pumping into the thing because the cost of it. And now that's my say in it. Thank you. Councillor Buschetti, any further comments? Just I guess more of a comment. I, I respect what other, all the rest of council is saying. And we did give the person the opportunity. We explained our thoughts to him and or him or her, whoever the developer is. We did give them the differences going to two acres to not going to two acres with holding tanks and septic fields. This is what he chose. Like we, we can't, I guess, write the application for him. We, we gave our thoughts as a council. And I, I believe we, we, we pushed on that, that it would be better to have the fields, not the holding tanks. So it's just, we gave him the opportunity. This is the application he put in. And I guess this is what we get to choose on. So that was just more of my comment. We can't. And You're frozen, Mayor Christian. Also force him to do, he's got, oh. Are you able to hear me now? Yes. Are you able to hear me now? And he Can we can you hear me now? Okay. Um, his fields, even though he's got four eights, um, he's still choosing to put in a tank there. So um, for me, it's uh, it's not an issue. We with the lots, uh, we're 1.5. Um, you know, the concern would be, I know what he had mentioned to council when he asked for zoning. Um, and so when you come before council and ask for it to be zoned residential, to be putting houses in and you're under gunfire, uh, yes, yes, I haven't created my plan yet. I'm going to go back and do that. Yes, that makes sense. So, um, you know, this is the plan that he's presented council. So, uh, for me, the tanks consistent with the area, this is not brand new area for me. I'm, I'm fine with this in terms of, uh, the issues of, of people pumping out with holding tanks. Um, that's not a problem with holding tanks. That's a problem of, of homeowners. And the province, we are working with them to enforce that. So, uh, 
you know, it, we're not against holding tanks. We're against people who drop lines down them and pump them into ditches. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be contained and safe. In terms of fields being better than holding tanks, uh, the reason that we've had to spend uh, upwards of $14 million on a main trunk in West St. Paul and have uh, uh, seven LIDs now is because the province um, inspected uh, our community, St. Andrews, St. Clement, Selkirk, East St. Paul, and found that uh, failing uh, septic fields were draining out into ditches. And so unfortunately, you know, that's the that's a bit of the problem that we've got and why we've gotten to the situation where we have wastewater coming to our community to protect that aquifer. So um, I understand the concerns raised and uh, it's been good council discussion on it. Lots of different opinions. I have uh, read the resolution and I have a request for a recorded vote and uh, I will call for the question. Sorry, I'm going to come off of screen. Can you hear me still? Did we get a um, mover and a seconder? I believe we have. Ms. Shaw, did I get a mover and a seconder on this? Thank you. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, you have a mover and seconder. Great, thank you. I will call for the question. All those in favor? And opposed? And that is defeated. All right, we have one more planning item, and that is third reading zoning bylaw. And uh, Mr. Planner, you've got the background information on that. I will turn that back over to you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So this uh, is zoning bylaw amendment number 2018-19P. Uh, this is third reading. Uh, the location is 1141 Mollard Road and is to rezone the property from A80 Agricultural to RR Rural Residential in order to facilitate a subdivision. So there is a conditionally approved subdivision that would create uh, two lots out of this existing property. And a condition of approval for that subdivision is that this rezoning be given third reading. So um, before third reading uh, could take place, uh, the development agreement had to be completed, and I have been informed by our administration that development agreement has been signed by all parties. Uh, therefore, um, council is now in a position to give this zoning by amendment third reading. And just a, a map before you now showing the location of the uh, of the area to be rezoned. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Planner. I'll go around and see if there are any questions. Councillor Link, any questions for the planner? No, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for the planner? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Councillor Prague, any questions for the planner? No questions. And Councillor Buschetti, any questions for the planner? No questions. Thank you. All right. I will read the resolution. Be it resolved that bylaw 2018-19P, being a bylaw of the Real Municipality of West St. Paul to rezone the property located at 1141 Mollard Road, from A80 to Agriculture RR, Rural Residential, be read a third and final time, signed, sealed, and therefore passed as a bylaw of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded Councillor Prague. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Planner, for joining us this evening and walking us through these items. Very much appreciated. Have a great night. Thanks. For the rest of us, I'm going to call a 15 minute recess so that we can take a break and then we'll carry on with the rest of the agenda items. So we will see you back in uh, 15 minutes. Thank you.
All right, we are back live. Thank you to those patiently waiting while we had a break. We are now on item seven, confirmation of minutes. 7.1 regular minutes of February 25th. Be it resolved that the minutes of the regular meeting of council held on February 25th, 2021 be approved. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Buschetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion on the minutes? Councillor Link, go ahead. Okay. No, so, I was seconding, okay. <laughs> but I was too late. Okay, no problem. Seeing no comments for discussion then, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. We're down to item 10.1, accounts. Be it resolved that the vouchers 41925 to 41969 as listed and totaling $223,411.09 and void check 41541 and totaling $443.41 be approved as presented. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Buschetti, second to Councillor Prague. Any comments, questions on the accounts? Councillor Link, go ahead. I do have a question and I am gonna be asking or can I ask now for a recorded vote? Okay. okay, the question is on 41941, uh, Duron Equipment supplied an auger attachment and salt slash sander spreader for $12,961.76. Is that a capital budget item for 2020? Thank you, Councillor Lane. Turn that over to the CAO. No, it is, it's operational. Sorry. No, it isn't, it's operational. I sent an email. I didn't see your email, I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, uh, could I ask another question then? Um, I thought okay. we uh, I thought we had talked and the council had agreed that if you had questions on the check correct, you would ask them ahead of time so uh, that oh, I did. we would have time to bring up the invoices and look. All right, but I know that loader blade capital purchase from high track was a capital budget item. What what makes a capital budget item? And an oper the difference between them, they're both equipment that Public Works gets. Um, what makes one an operational budget item and one a capital budget item? Yeah, I will. Sorry, sorry. There we go. Yeah, this is the check register. This isn't an educational uh, briefing to All to right, bring you up to speed on on uh, on uh, on how we do the budget. You can ask these questions at the budget to vote capital. I will the then. Thank you, sir. Items, please. Councillor Kyber, go ahead. Usually equipment is a fixed asset. So fixed asset usually does go on ca under capital budget items unless there is a limit that is produced. But fixed assets usually go there. Any other questions? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. We have our CAO reports, uh, CAO report for February with attached reports from staff. Any questions to the CAO regarding the CAO report? Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. February 3rd, there was a meeting, River Spring Road Rules with Mayor, Councillor Buschetti, Councillor Parag, a developer and operations. What was that in regarding? That was in regards to uh, complying with the road regulations and complaints from the area uh, regarding contractors on the street and how there would be access to properties. Okay. So I can see the ward councillor being there and the mayor. Was there a reason why Councillor Buschetti needed to be there? It extends into his ward. It extends into his ward. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, fair enough. February 4th. Rivercrest 75, what, what is that? Is that Rivercrest Hotel or? No, it's the 75th anniversary of the Rivercrest uh, Veterans Settlement. 75 oh. years ago this year, uh, the veterans were, were uh, given land for subdivision in the Rivercrest. And so 
Um, we had a phone call, the uh, CIO and myself, from a former Rivercrest resident um, wanting to talk about volunteering and putting something together possibly to pay Great. a That's tribute so to the years. Great. That is our mayor of the uh, deputy mayor of the city of Winnipeg uh, many years ago, and uh, it was a good conversation. And hopefully, we can uh, get some volunteers uh, involved in that. Um, I would just point out to you February 9th, uh, code of contact. Uh, you might want to change that. Probably should be code of conduct instead of code of contact. And um, also, I'm, I wondered about something in my ward, which was February 24th, Slater Road. Uh, was there an issue with Slater Road? Uh, no. no issue, just a resident wanted to meet and ask some questions. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, did you give them my email in case they needed any further help? No, they didn't ask for it. Okay, well, you'll keep me in the loop then, I assume, if there's any issues. Yeah, if if, uh, if the resident wants to talk to you, I certainly would uh, refer them to you. I, I, it wasn't really a counselor's issue. Okay, thank you. Councillor Prague, go ahead. I just want to touch on the topic about Rivercrest there, about the 75th anniversary for the first veteran settlement there. And just for the council to know that I put in a request for a new sign with a big poppy to be put there instead of that sign we have there, just for to give the council the heads up for this anniversary. I know the mayor went, was talking, that's why I brought this up now. Thank you for that, Councillor Prague. Absolutely. It's a, it's a big deal, 75 years. And um, when one of the first things we did as a council after we were elected was approve uh, veteran signs throughout the community with poppies on them for every street named after a veteran. And our veteran settlement area doesn't have any poppies. And, and it's because the veterans actually live there and none of the streets are named after them. They were living there. So um, I think it's a great budget request that you've submitted this year, Councillor Prague. It's excellent. Any other questions on the uh, CAO report? Okay. And then we have council February report. Any questions, concerns on the February report? Councillor Bichetti, go ahead. Just more of a comment, Councillor Kleiber. You just, you, in your report, you have the, the trails has multifamily. The trails doesn't have any multifamily in it. Just to clarify. Oh, actually, I meant that I also talked about uh, smaller density, and so that was in part of that. Sorry, I just mis misread it, I guess. Sorry. There you have to do the yeah. Okay, thank you. So that is, uh, I will read the resolution and we'll accept as information. Be it resolved that the Council of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul accept the CAO report as information. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor uh, Kleiber, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed and that is carried, thank you. And I'll go back, payroll monthly statement. Be it resolved that the payroll for the month of February as follows be approved as presented. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Buschetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion regarding the payroll monthly statement? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried, thank you. We have miscellaneous correspondence uh, for the month of, sorry, for the month of February, pulling up the resolution. Be it resolved that the Council of the Municipality of West St. Paul accept the miscellaneous correspondence for the month of February as information. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Kleiber, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion regarding the miscellaneous correspondence? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. 15.1, we have our miscellaneous meeting dates. 
Be it resolved that the Council of the Real Municipality of West St. Paul authorize attendance at the following meetings as listed. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Pereg, seconded Councillor Buschetti. Any discussion regarding the miscellaneous meeting dates? Councillor Link, go ahead. Uh, you're still on mute. I did send an email at 1214 to yourself and to Ms. Shaw, our MLO, a copy to the uh, um, CAO. Did, did you get that email? Were you able to consider it? Able to consider additions? Yes. Yes, so do you wanna say those now and then Ms. Shaw can add those to the meetings that you wanted to be added to? Well, in, on January the 19th, I attended, as did Councillor Pereg, the Age Family Webinar. On January 21st, I attended the Red River Basin Commission Land and Water International Conference. Uh, on February the 4th, all everybody on council attended the AMM. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Sorry. Uh, uh, on February 4th, I attended the AMM, and I believe Councillor Prag did too, to the finish line and beyond setting realistic priorities. On February 18th, all of council attended AMM annual internet municipal visits. Now, perhaps I missed out and knew, uh, but I don't recall any resolutions okaying attendance at those. So um, I was expecting to see them on this month's um, listing for item 15.1. Am I uh, mistaken there? I can speak to that, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Shaw. Um, if council will recall, uh, we did appointment to council committees. It was resolution 2020-547, which authorized um, attendance at certain um, committees. Uh, age friendly allows all members of council of attend event attendance. Um, the same with uh, the Red River Basin Commission and a number of other um, committees and, and groups that we're associated with. So we refer to that resolution when preparing the miscellaneous meeting dates from your council reports. Thank you, Ms. Shaw. Um, was, was the planning meeting um, that a AMM had included in that as well then? Event attendance for Association of Manitoba Municipalities is authorized under that resolution. Okay, okay. So are you saying that I was paid for the age-friendly webinar and the RRBC? Yes. Okay, that's fine, that's good. Thank you, Councillor Link. Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I noticed on, um, let's see here, February 18th, Prairie Natural Gardens meeting. I attended that as well, but I because it's not an official committee, I wasn't sure whether or not we were charging for that. So um, should I be charging for that? That would be up to you. I'm not gonna tell a council member what to charge for, but um, I've charged for that. It was uh, two and a half hours that uh, yeah. that we attended that. And then the reason that we attended is to learn about uh, the preservation of riparian areas. Right. So I think it was really important. It was very good. Very good um, meeting, actually. And just relative to other things that council members have wanted to charge for, we've charged for lighting of Christmas lights. And this is to, you know, this is for riparian area and preservation. So it's, it's education for council. Um, but... I mean, it's up to each individual member of council if whether they feel it's appropriate to submit for that or not. So, Ms. Shaw, can I be added on to that then? Because I did, I also attended that. Made that note, thank you. And um, I'll just, for residence purposes, um, the January uh, meetings are there because um, I was late with my report and I added them in to this report and that's why they're showing up now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Prey, go ahead. 
I think on my indemnity, I didn't charge for the prairie thing. I didn't know what to do. So seeing that the thing now, I'll, if the MLO can add that on for me, I'll appreciate that. I have you added, Councillor. Thank you. And just to say, uh, Mayor Christian, that was an excellent meeting. I really enjoyed it. I thought there was a lot of really good information there. Um, so very helpful for things that we're talking about, especially today on the riverbank. So really good. Absolutely. I think any opportunity, and we've talked about staff education, any opportunity that we can be educated as a council to make better decisions with information that we have. The guest speaker um, for residents watching um, uh, spoke about riparian areas along rivers and, and uh, how you preserve those and some examples of what was done and what was planted and really very informative and also a contact for our municipality um, going forward if we ever needed any information or advice. So. Um, that was definitely well worth it. Um, beautification and preserving our uh, natural areas in West St. Paul has been a priority identified in strategic planning and any way we can be better informed as council members, it's great. It was really great. All right, I have a mover and a seconder and seeing no further questions, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed and that is carried. Thank you. We have 15.2 the tender package for the waste activated sludge and wastewater pumping and disposal. I will read the resolution. Be it resolved that Council of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul award the tender for wastewater pumping and disposal to the low bid submitted by St. Andrew's Septic Services in the amount of uh, $180 per load. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Buschetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion on that? We did talk about that at the Committee of the Whole and we've got the administrative report attached and then we also have a comparison so that we see what bids were submitted. Seeing, oh, Councillor Pray, go ahead. Is this a West St. Paul company? I believe so, yes. Okay. Yeah. I think that they've been doing this service in our community for a number of years now. And just opening up the comparison, I th well, this is available to the public. It's not locked document. There were a number of people that submitted, number of companies that submitted bids, uh, two, two companies that submitted bids on this. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed and that is carried. We have item 15.3 roadside speed display device be it resolved that council of the real municipality of west st paul approve the installation of a speed display device on the west side of main street 400 meters north of minnehaha avenue as recommended by manitoba infrastructure can i have a mover please moved by councillor buschetti seconded councillor prague any further discussion on this uh, we've got the administrative report attached and we talked about it at the committee of the whole Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. And we have item 15.4, the Board of Revisions. Be it resolved that Council of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul schedule the Board of Revision for the 2022 uh, Realty Business Personal Property Rolls and Added Taxes for Wednesday, November 3rd, 2020 at 5 p.m. Can I get a mover, please? Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Kleiber. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. All right, we have uh, a couple of items to discuss in camera, so we will be moving in camera. I will read the resolution. Be it resolved that in accordance with section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council do now move in camera to discuss a report of the Ombudsman and illegal matter. And be it further resolved that in accordance with section 83.1D of the Municipal Act, any issues that are discussed are kept confidential until discussed at a regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Kleiber. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried, thank you. So we are now moving in camera.
camera. Thank you to those who are patiently waiting. Uh, our Ryzen report for this evening, 18.3.1. We have a resolution on Manitoba Ombudsman file 2018-0456. Be it resolved that Council of the Real Municipality of West St. Paul accepts the Manitoba Ombudsman report and recommendation to file 2018-0456. And further, that administration provide a letter to the Manitoba Ombudsman advising of the steps the municipality will undertake to give effect to the recommendation. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Buschetti, seconded Councillor Kleiber. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. And we have uh, item 18.1.2, legal. And Ms. Shaw, I'll ask you to please read the resolution. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Be it resolved that the Council of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul direct administration to prepare an apology letter in response to a complaint received. And further, be it resolved that Council approves the Mayor to sign this letter on the behalf of Council. Thank you. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Pregg, seconded Councillor Buschetti. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favour? Opposed? And that is carried, thank you. All right, I will ask for a mover and a seconder to adjourn the meeting. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Kleiber, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion, hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor, opposed, and that is carried, thank you. Right, that's our meeting for this evening. Thank you to everyone for joining us. Thank you, Council. Good night. See you soon, have a great night.